Hi my pretty eye and welcome back to my channel. My name's Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here and let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. And we are continuing the Princess Piggy habitat. <laughs> and I actually took a day in between building the habitat from the last episode and then coming and finishing it off in this video. Does that make sense? Like I actually took time in between building in these that's why i thought it'd be a nice place to stop as well in the last episode because it's nice to come back after staring at your screen for hours and hours and look at it with some fresh rested eyes <laughs> and i decided to change the walls again and these were the walls that i used in the lined swimming pool for the abandoned water park habitat in my last zoo. I knew I could recolor these brick walls and so instead of using concrete for all of the pink bits I've used these light pink brick walls and then the tower in the middle is that slightly darker concrete pink and I hated the roof. <laughs> as soon as I came back and saw that giant purple roof I was like nope don't want you. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the last build video for the Barbarossa habitat, I would recommend watching that first because that is how I built the start of all of this castle. And this was actually suggested to me by a viewer and I will put the comment down below again or like on screen underneath. <laughs> Again, because I really appreciate having suggestions for these builds, it feels like we're building this zoo together really, isn't it? So it's nice to have some suggestions and I really appreciate it. So thank you, Emily, for giving me excuse to do something that I love doing, which is cutesy pink things. <laughs> and the brick parts were nice, don't get me wrong. I did like these brick parts because it tied it in more with the cherry blossom courtyard but it wasn't cutesy enough it wasn't pink and frilly enough so i went back in into the art shapes or whatever they're called i got the smallest little square i could find and then followed the pattern of the bricks but colored them in basically <laughs> and this is kind of fiddly and it took a little while to do but i think it adds a nice little detail in i like little details in zoos it just adds that makes it more eye-catching and that's what i'm always going for is eye-catching thumbnails <laughs> i did want to keep some of the bricks gray to match it all in but i didn't really like how it looked like the art shapes are quite matte looking but like really bright and the bricks not so much they are like kind of textured and not very bright so i uh, ended up just using this like pink purple and white pattern and filling in the rest of the bricks luckily i didn't have to do this every single time because once i had filled in the bricks once with these little squares i can then go back and duplicate the rest and it's quite nice as well because these bricks are slightly thicker than the walls of the castle they do actually go into the inside as well so not only does it decorate the outside it decorates the inside too so what I did was just group up all of my nice little bricks and duplicated them around so once I got the pattern down that's all I needed to do then was duplicate it around the whole castle I did try to fit the pattern into the bricks so it was easier to like fill in gaps because obviously I didn't have straight lines uh, from the first group. It's kind of jagged but it's being hidden by the towers uh, so this was kind of tricky. The first side I got it right but like the other side wasn't quite right. <laughs> which you'll see once I try and fill in some of these gaps but like the smaller parts between the towers are perfectly fine. I didn't actually have the Barbarossa in the habitat until like pretty much the end so I didn't even know they could get in here. I was really thinking that it was too short because I was only using half walls but when I play tested it was fine like the roof's actually quite tall. <laughs> 
But when you haven't really got anything to compare it to, it's kind of difficult. So there we go, I'm just filling in some of the gaps with the bricks. I didn't have to do too much. As you can see, some things, the shapes aren't quite the same size. And I probably could have done with following the pattern on the walls a bit better on those sides. But I figured the guests can't really see that side. And the Barbarossa don't really care. It's just me wanting everything to be perfect. And then of course the entrance part as well, like that little archway area needed to be pink and purple too. But the new sign for the Barbarossas really matched in with the colour scheme of the castle and I was so happy about that. It fit in really nicely with the whole colour scheme of the build. And it also kind of fit as a like family crest. It's kind of what you get in castles and stuff, like think Hogwarts with like the house crests. Uh, that's kind of a thing in like castles, isn't it? The only thing I've kind of got to, uh, to compare it against is a place called St. Fagans in Wales. And that is like a history museum, but it's not a museum. It's got like a replica of buildings throughout hundreds of years to show how Welsh people lived. So like there's a street where they have houses decorated in different decades. So like from, I think it's from the 30s, I'm not sure, all the way up to like 90s-ish to show how people lived. And they have a castle there which has like family crests and stuff too. That's kind of like the main building, sort of. And it's got like a lovely garden to walk around as well. They have like crests on the wall at the like grand entrance part of that castle. I was getting somewhere with that story. <laughs> so my roof was like the trickiest thing ever. I hated it. <laughs> but these glass panels worked great because they could be recolored and they were skinny enough to fit in that gap because this is like not quite built on a grid and it's built to be slightly smaller than a regular sized building because it's only a habitat. It's kind of tricky to roof the whole thing but using these glass panels it also allowed me to add in some natural light into the habitat too so in the daytime the Barbarossa can go in there and chill but still have some daylight in there which is nice. Compared to the bottom walls with all of the patterned pink, purple and white bricks, the sides of this building were very, very plain. So instead of going through the East Asian style things, I wanted to go a little bit more castle-y with this part. We've got a little bit of the East Asian style stuff in, but I've gone with the classic style for this extra little bit here to make it look a little bit more castle-y. And just to give it that little extra detail onto the side, take your eye away from the slightly badly patterned brick pieces as well. <laughs> like look at the top, don't look underneath. I kind of made a mistake there. <laughs> really, if I, I cared that much, I wouldn't say anything though, would I? <laughs> Just hope no one notices. So I wanted a moat for my castle. Castles tend to have moats. <laughs> so I wanted a moat around my castle, add that extra little detail in, make the surrounding area around the castle like a rocky texture without having to add in lots of individual rocks. I love the rough and terrain tool. It is amazing. I discovered that and I can't look back like it's so much easier just roughening terrain than adding in individual rocks and that'll also help my PC performance because there's less objects. I say that and look how many different objects are in this castle. <laughs> but yes and I've also got a drawbridge. I use the wooden planks because I know animals tend to have the ability to walk and climb on the wooden ones. I know the Barbarossa can't technically climb, but I wanted to make sure that they could actually walk on that area. And drawbridges are usually wooden, aren't they? And this is like a cartoon castle, so it's fine. And now onto the viewing area. This is amazing, I love it. I was gonna put the education boards on the glass, but 
I didn't want to block the view, so I just put them on the at the walls behind. Speaking of like education boards and stuff, we can now custom build billboards and like we can add our own custom images into like education boards like this. So would you be interested to see how I would do that? I'm kind of tempted to make a custom entrance billboard in Photoshop to add into the cherry blossom courtyard or like just outside the cherry blossom courtyard. So if you'd like to see me do that, a little bit of Photoshop in amongst the building, definitely let me know. I'll do like a little how to. I've kind of just taught myself everything that I know with Photoshop and just watch some YouTube videos so I don't know specific wording for things. I wanted to use fairy lights to add into the cutesy frilliness of the build. I wanted to add in some fairy lights as well. I love fairy lights. <laughs> so I thought it would be nice to add in those for like more of a nighttime look into the habitat. Maybe we'll see some Barbarossa having a nice sleep in their little nesty areas in those corners. And it just adds in just a subtle glow. And all of the fairy lights I think are from the Arctic pack, especially those star ones definitely are. I can't remember whether those ones are or not. They might be. So yeah, I'm just lining around the glass viewing area, putting some fairy lights along those edges or like the support beams as well and I wanted to add in some lighting on the outside as well and the classic lights look quite ornate and fit in with like the castle -y theme. The East Asian lights are really nice but I'd like to keep them for the like pathways and stuff. I have added in some extra lights around the pathways too trying to add in little details as I go so it's not so difficult to finish everything off. I got really bored last time so I am trying to put some extra zoo detailing in around the zoo as I go but when I have so much fun building a habitat like this it's hard to stop and do everything else. I just really enjoy being like creative with all of this. So yeah they look really nice with the lights on the outside. And then the lights from the windows as well. I think it fits in really nicely. And yes, my Barbaros are all in and ready. Finally got them in. All of the enrichment items are recolored now as well. So I needed to sort out some of the terrain paint for the Barbarossa. They weren't super happy with the amount of grass I had, which I was really surprised by. I kept going in and looking at the pigs as well, getting very distracted while trying to build and there was a little Barbarossa playing in the mud uh, pit thing and it got actually dirty. I didn't realise they actually got mud on them when they went into that little mud pit thing so that was pretty good. And the Barbarossa can definitely go into the castle shelter and the keepers can also walk around the whole habitat too so that was really good <laughs> especially because I didn't check until now and they like lots of coverage the reeds really adds that little bit of realism to the build like it's a giant dollhouse basically but then you put some plants in and then it's like well this could be a real thing <laughs> It's the kind of castle I would live in anyway. <laughs> Pink and purple, my dream. I love these reeds. They was, uh, they're like common reeds. I think they were the ones with like the brown tips to them. They always remind me of going on bike rides <laughs> as a child. And there was always this little park that had those reeds in like a pond that I would cycle down to. <laughs> I can't remember what time of year it was, it was always warm, but they would get like fluffy and that's all I remember as a child is like these fluffy sticks and I just wanted to play with them. I wanted to pull it apart, just such sensory satisfaction <laughs> and that's all I could think of when I was building this was those like brown things at a certain time of the year they would go fluffy and that's all I wanted to do was like pull them apart and play with the floof. It was never allowed. <laughs> it's like, no, don't play with that. And I was like, oh, looks so satisfying. 
And I've left like pretty much half of the habitat quite flat and plain so the Barbarossa can have like a run around and they've got more of a chance of just going into the enrichment items then and then they've got like the shelter and all of the plant coverage around the back of the habitat. And then I used the statues as gargoyles, <laughs> the Barbarossa statues as gargoyles. Castles have gargoyles and Barbarossas are not the nicest looking things. <laughs> Sorry little princess piggies, but they're not the cutest looking things and gargoyles are not cute so I use the statues as gargoyles. <laughs> and it's a little bit more like Barbarossas live here, why not? <laughs> So a little bit more plants. I kind of wanted to stop the Barbarossa from being able to walk around this back area, but they still can. They can get around quite a lot of plants. I think it's nice having a little bit of greenery around as well, because that makes the princess castle stand out more. And now onto education and stuff around the pathways. I am using the same frames that I used for the Malayan tapirs. Unfortunately, the sign for the Barbarossas don't really go with the shape of the frames that I'd made. So I, I'm just going to stick to having the signs on the castle. So once the guests can walk down into that bit and go down the stairway, they can see the sign anyway. And you can see that I've added extra lampposts around the map as well. And of course they're pink and white too. <laughs> and the uh, donation bins are all pink. I love that. I keep forgetting that I can actually have like a full block colour for the donation bins because they're usually like stripey, aren't they? It's nice having them plain. I don't have a animal talk for this one though because I'd made the barriers really tall. I don't think they needed to be that tall but because I'd made them super tall and the only other entrance is the back of the castle and that's all blocked off too um there's not really much room for an animal talk in this one but we will put more animal talks in for the other habitats too now we're pretty much done with the barbarossa habitat i do need to ask what you would like me to build next as you can tell, I love having suggestions for builds and habitats because I love feeling like we're all creating this soon. It's not just me on my own. <laughs> I love being creative, but I love having some input with it as well. And it feels like a collaborative effort. So what animal shall we build a habitat for next? We have five more habitat animals and one exhibit animal. I'm not really sure what to do for any of them yet i have a general idea of where i want to put them in this map i've like kind of put the animal signs roughly where i want the habitats to go but that's about it so let me know what shall we do next and yeah that's pretty much it i'm so happy with this thank you so much for your suggestion emily this is this has been so much fun to build and it's just so cute i hope i made it pink and frilly enough for you <laughs> let me know <laughs> and yeah that's pretty much it so i'm gonna finish it off here if you enjoyed this video smash that like button and if you haven't already and you would like to it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever i upload a new video i upload on wednesdays and saturdays thank you so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you next time goodbye